So I'm glad everybody got on tonight. Hey, I, I woke up this morning and um, because my dogs were barking, <laughs> that sounds like a, the, the pun, but actually my dogs were barking. And, um, and so they woke me up. We have a lot of difference around the house for them. So their cages aren't in the house where they usually would be. And because of that, um, when we when we tell them to go to their place, they aren't able to go to their place because their place doesn't exist anymore. So they're not sleeping good. And I don't feel like sorry for them, but they're just not sleeping good. They're not, you know, they're not having the time that they usually have. So then every little thing that they hear, they end up uh, not waking up. They're just ready for it. And so they just start barking. So this morning they start barking at four, both of them. And of course it wakes us all up and then I have to let them out so they can go see what it is that they're so excited about. And then as I did that and then came back to bed, um, I was on my way back and I kept hearing um, the words, relevance and existence and um and i'm gonna talk about it tonight i'm gonna just give you exactly what i wrote uh as i was receiving it from the father there's more to this but i'm gonna just give you this beginning part of it but i heard the words relevance and i heard existence relevance and existence and i really feel like gosh like um, God wants to get us to a good place. I was reading the words that I think, uh, Martha had written and Sharice had written, um, lately as of late, maybe a couple days ago, something like that, that were posted. And, um, I had written, I had read that maybe 24 hours before hearing this next part. And I always think that things are connected in some way like in a river and a flow you just keep going and so um you may hear something from that even tonight but uh, i want to pray that our hearts would be open so that we can kind of get a good comprehension of the spirit and what he wants to say to us tonight father i just ask you to uh, uh, be who you are and to be evident we want to experience who you are. We want to experience the spirit of the Lord. We want to have things illuminated to us that we um, may be not expect it. And so we just submit all of this and everything that we are to you. And we just want to participate, be a participant tonight in all that you desire to do. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Uh, the scripture that I want to give, and I, will, I, will, I only have one passage. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it starts at verse 3. Uh, the main scripture in this is verse 10, but I'm going to start at verse 3. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. This is Paul talking, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive at that time, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And then Paul says in verse eight, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. And then verse 10, and this is what the verse that I feel like is connected to relevance and existence. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. I think you'll see how this verse works after you hear the things that I'm going to say that I was hearing from the Father um, uh, this morning. 
the first thing that I heard was my existence qualifies me for greater, greater. My existence qualifies me for greater, but my existence doesn't promise me that I will reach my full potential. My existence qualifies me for greater, but it doesn't promise me that I'm going to reach my full potential. I pivot upon the foundation of my existence and I reach out in every direction to find connection with what and who would be interested, whom would be interested in who I am, in the person that I am, the person that exists. As I was hearing that this morning, I was just seeing how we as people, just people in general, we reach out to make connections and we reach out to make friendships. We make, we reach out to make partnerships. We reach out for relationship and it's the foundation of who we are. We have to exist in order to have relationship. That's how it is. That's how it was given to me. And that's how I was seeing it. But then it went, it goes on further. Once I have determined connection, relationship, and all of those great things, I could move towards relevancy because it is not enough to exist only while never reaching inward, never reaching outward, never reaching upward, and therefore being a shell empty of reward. It's important uh, that we do all of those things, that we reach inward, we reach outward, of course, that we reach upward and that we extend ourselves in our existence so that we can become people that reach our full potential. We can't reach our full potential if we don't extend ourselves past ourselves. I mean, hopefully you agree. Once I have determined that connection, then I, I can move towards relevancy. So potential is deceiving, the father said. Potential is deceiving when you rely, when you rely, rely on the premise that there is more to you locked up and locked away that's just waiting to be released, but but there's no catalyst. There's there's nothing that it that's causing you to reach that tipping point. You can be full of potential, which we all are. We all are as people, we are all, we all are as the church, we all are as the prophetic community, we are full of potential. But what is the catalyst that's going to cause all that potential to be, uh, be known, to come out where we, we connect with the right people, we, we, we connect with the right relationships, we have a moment where things just tip in our favor and we find that the things that we have been filled with for so long are finally being poured out in the right place. That's potential being released. It can be very deceiving to just be okay with, I'm full of potential. I used to sing a song about, you know, we're full of potential, a kid song, you know, and yeah, well, I'm not going to sing it. The point is, is that we all know that we are full of potential, but sometimes we don't know what it's going to take to have that potential released. And we, I think we all want to have something that's in us to be released. Existence isn't, is exist. Let me say it again. Existence is the entrance of light into the world. Relevancy is the turning on of that same light in a darkened place. We, we exist, we are light bearers in the world. That doesn't make us relevant until we turn on that light in a darkened place. That's pretty simple to understand. So the father said, where are you on? <laughs> a 
where are you on, Derek? And then the next thing I heard is being on is not the point of reward, but rather being on in a place that is destitute of light. I'm talking about, uh, when we talk about relevancy and existence, one of the things he was showing me was it's, it's not good enough to be okay with existing. You want to be relevant. You want the prophetic community to be relevant. You want the church to be relevant. Uh, you want to be relevant on your job. You want to be relevant in your family. You want to be relevant in the relationships that you have. It's, it's just, you don't want to just exist. And so that's what's going on here. So I began to ask myself, well, God is light, you know, and um, his relevancy is huge, of course. If there is the opportunity for him not to have to be in a darkened place, but he is around other light, does that make him irrelevant? It's like being in a it's like being in a a room and everyone in there is like say if you're in a bar you feel like you may be relevant because you can speak and be the light in a dark place if that's the case but then you go into a church and uh, just as an example you could be around other people that are full of light and then you're not as relevant because everybody's full of light and so then I just questioned well, what about God? Is he relevant because everyone is full of light at some point? Does God who is light lose his relevancy amongst the world when we exhibit light? No, no. God is light. In fact, the, the way I heard it was his existence feeds our existence. He is the source of our existence. And even more than that, he forever is relevant because he is the beginning and the end. He never reaches potential because he's not limited by th the thought or the perception and the growth factor of potential. He just is. That's why he's God. You know, it just he completely supersedes the idea and concept of potential. He supersedes the concept of greater light. There is, there's no such thing as greater. He's just, he just is. All these other words that we use are for understanding so we can know the difference between the knowledge of good and evil. But he doesn't, he's not any of that. Unless the light is active, I, um, oh, wait, wait, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So then uh, I, I heard that we are, we, on the other hand, can be in a room where all of us are the same. And we've been there. We, we are in one right now. We dress the same. We can look the same. We can talk the same. We're all prophetic. Uh, it doesn't seem like much is different. This can be irrelevancy at its very height. To be deceived and yet believing you're relevant because you exist. So, as I said before, what I heard was we're not relevant just because we exist. The church isn't relevant just because the church exists. The prophetic community that we have right here isn't relevant just because we exist. Your prophetic word that comes out of your mouth isn't relevant just because it exists and to, to be said. So then I began to ask another question. Does having more light in a bundle of light produce more light and peculiarity? Or does more light that is stationary become obsolete? This is what I'm asking the Father. Does having more light in a bundle of light, group of light, produce more light and peculiarity, or does more light that is stationary become obsolete? And so then I heard that unless the light is active, 
and moving, the light becomes dependent on the light of others to be comfortable and sustained. <laughs> unless the light is active, unless the light is moving, we are light bears. If you've been following me at all, you know that we've been talking about light. Jesus was the light of the world as long as he was here. And then when he left, they said, you are the light of the world. You are a city set up on a hill. It shouldn't be hidden. It can't be hidden. We are the light of the world now. Unless our light is actively moving It can become dependent on the light of others for us to be comfortable or sustained. I find that this happens in church all the time. When he told me that, I saw it immediately and I see it even now that uh, it's so easy to, to live off of someone else's convictions rather than to have your own. I did it when I was a when I was a son in my mother and father's house. I lived off of their convictions until I moved out. And then I had to determine what are my convictions? How how bright is my light? Up until that point, I was living under their light. Right? I hope that makes sense. So we do this in church a lot, the organization where we depend on others to be full of light. And it makes it look like we are also in the light. But we may not have been turning on our light. We may not have been doing the necessary things, allowing the, the, the fruits of the spirit to be expressed in our life so that our light could shine brightly. But because we're around others, that have a light, we look like our light is shining, but really we're light dependent because we're depending on the others. And that's a, that's a fallacy in the church today because we aren't as bright as we think we are, unfortunately. Uh, let me just keep going because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. The, the mental deception of being utterly satisfied with being alive and existing is so real and it's so deceptive. The mental deception of being satisfied with just being alive. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm actually in my, this is my month of um, uh, having fallen from a tree, fallen from a ladder. I'm grateful to be walking. I am grateful to be using my hand. But how many of you know that's just not enough? But I am grateful. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful that I'm not an invalid. I'm grateful that the things that could have happened didn't happen. But that's not enough just to be alive and able. So I also see that this was true of faith and works. We were talking about this Sunday. But here, here's a little different look at it. Works are the expression of faith. We know that. They come from the actions of our heart, our hands, uh, the actions of our what we say, our mouths. Works, though, are not absent of faith, and faith is not absent of works. But faith is increased by my works. You see my works, and my faith is increased. Uh, talking about relevancy and existence a relevant faith is a wrong conjecture because faith is relevant because it exists as potential. The Bible says now faith is. So when you tap into what is already in existence, you cause your life to move towards relevancy, relevancy clearly because you're now in motion. If you're not in motion, you're light dependent on other people's light. 
if you're if you're not in motion, your faith isn't in motion. Your faith is dead. Right. So here the father says, when you tap into what is already in existence, you cause your life to move towards relevancy clearly because you're now in motion and you will and must express the potential of faith. So faith doesn't die. Continual expression of faith keeps faith alive within you so you can obtain that which you were created for, thereby becoming relevant through acquisition. So the scripture says, uh, uh, I apprehend what I was apprehended for. Not I'm waiting on what I was apprehended for. No, I am pushing, moving. I, I'm in motion towards what I was apprehended for. I'm not waiting on it to come to me. I am looking for it steadily and doing whatever the necessary is so that I can obtain it. I can acquire it. If I don't, then my, then my faith is dead. And I begin become light dependent. So I, I begin to ask the father, what the, what is the practicality of all of this? <clears throat> and so you are not relevant merely because you exist. I was like, okay, you, you aren't relevant because I'm not relevant just because I exist. Uh, the church, he began to talk to me about the church is becoming an organization that is irrelevant. The organization is fighting for relevancy. Our programs are based on attractiveness. So we attract people, attractiveness to the person instead of relevance to the kingdom. We've, we've become, we're trying to attract people more than we are trying to be relevant to the kingdom. We are turning on every light. We're exposing ourselves by questioning our relevancy because we have not seen the apprehension of reward. And so the world is turning away farther and farther from the church. And then we're attempting to attract them and keep their attention by giving people reflections of darkness, I heard, reflections of darkness, and then we want to name it and call it holy. And we have become secularized in our thinking, secularized in our lifestyle, so that we are reaching out from that pivot point we talked about earlier of our existence, hoping that we will look interesting to darkened hearts where the light hasn't penetrated yet. It's, 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 this isn't his comment. This is my comment. It's a mess. It's a mess. We're, we're learning or we're leaning on reflecting darkness, uh, reflecting the familiar, familiar attraction. So, so we want to get their attention and draw them into a comfortable place where they are supposed to see us as lights. talking about the church that's us a church that reflects darkness is not relevant instead that church organized its own this is how i heard it uh, instead that church organized its own funeral and is living within the grave six feet down yeah A church that's an organization, any church, can be you, can be me, can be anyone that is reflecting darkness in order to be relevant and to try to put the words holy over it, where it's like we're digging our grave and trying to live from outside, right there in that grave. Uh, looking like the world, uh, sounding like the world, talking or taking on the elements of darkness and hoping to speak to the generations before us existing in darkness, it's a trap. And this ends up 
this is this is mixture the father says it's not relevancy it's mixture i heard the father say i that he separated he reminding me that he, he separated light from darkness and placed the greater light to rule the two separate entities so you know in genesis that's what he did genesis he 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 says let there be light and then he causes the two that are still now now there's two there's light and darkness when he says let there be light darkness is still there and he takes it and he separates it That's what the scripture shows us. He separates it and he calls one night and the other one day. And then he puts two lights to rule, one to rule in the night and one to rule in the day. The sun is bright enough to shine in the light of day and rule it and overtakes it. The moon, on the other hand, is not as bright as the sun, but when it's placed in darkness, the moon becomes the most relevant light. So then I heard the father say, you cannot expect the sun and moon to exchange their positions and their place of rule where they rule at. One rules the day, one rules the night. You can't exchange that and put the sun at night and the moon in the day. If they did, uh, uh, if they did, they would not be relevant because there would be no order. There would just be existence. He's talking to us tonight about relevancy and existence. Prophets, prophetic voices, he began to talk about. The very last part of this. Those who speak with illumination that comes, we are, we are, that, that voice is relevant. If illumination is connected to your words, your words become relevant. If illumination, which is Holy Spirit, he's the one who illuminates Scripture continuously says in multiple places that he illuminates the darkened place. He illuminates the scripture so that we see it. And so if there's an illumination attached to your prophetic word, it can become relevant. If there is no illumination, I'm afraid it just exists. It, waiting to it be illuminated in a certain time frame or not at all. We know that every word that comes isn't for the moment, but it will be illuminated in time. Just because it isn't illuminated right in that moment doesn't mean it won't be. But sometimes we release words that aren't attached to the illuminator, Holy Spirit. Those words won't come to pass. Those words won't give they won't become a word of knowledge one day they just exist to have been said there are many times that we have heard prophets open their mouth just for the sake of opening their mouth but not for the sake of illumination that's only existing we do not want to exist as Prophets without illumination. It, we don't want to just exist. How about that? I, I want, I want, I want to be relevant. I want us to be relevant. I want you to be relevant. I want the prophetic community be, to be relevant. I don't want to do life just existing without relevancy. It is not enough to be a prophetic voice. If you're talking to the wrong people in the wrong places, you're not going to be relevant. 
If you're talking to the wrong people in the wrong places, you're not going to be relevant. We must produce and speak words that work. Scripture talks about working. I'm work. We have to work while it is day because it's, it's in the light that relevancy is taking place. So we must work while it is day. We must speak words that work, which produce, and they, they should produce faith in, in the hearer. They should produce hope in the hearer. Words that are relevant are words that are illuminated by Holy Spirit because he is just like God is. That's what I've heard. That's what I heard this morning. And it, and it, it was very encouraging, but it was also very challenging to me this morning because Holy Spirit is just saying, are you okay? Have you been okay with just being okay? And it's one thing to be grateful to be alive, but it's another thing to be relevant to those that are around you. And uh, I want to be relevant. And so when I, when I read that scripture, and I'm going to go back to it, because Paul talks about existence and he talks about relevancy in verse 10 when he says by the grace of God I am what I am and his grace toward me was not in vain which means to say that what God did for him by allowing him to be an apostle in that time moment and season having not seen God been been a part of what Jesus's world with being a a uh one that committed violence against the church, as he describes earlier, uh, being completely the opposite. And, and then it's the grace of God that, that he declares, I am who I am because of the grace of God. And I want you to know that his grace was not in vain, which means Paul is saying, you know what? I'm, I worked my tail off for this. I work to be relevant. Everything about relevancy isn't spiritual, guys. It's it's you. There are some things you have to do. They, the scripture talks about Paul taking seven years to uh, just get into the word before we ever saw him. Seven years later, you know, coming out, and here he is. It was not in vain that God graced him as an apostle it is he says on the contrary i worked harder than any of them he worked harder than any of the disciples he worked harder than any of the apostles to obtain what he obtained i think so he's one credited for writing more of the books in the new testament than any of the apostles paul worked hard and if you study his life you understand he worked hard and went through hell to obtain what he held, his reward. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. There is a grace on you. There is a grace on each and every one of you. I want you to know tonight. And whether it is that you are a prophet or that you are prophetic, Either one is good with me because scripture says, and Paul said it, I wish that you all would prophesy. We've studied it. We've seen it. You know what it is. There's a grace on you as an individual. There's a grace on our ministry to do what we do. And we don't want to be those that could say, you know what? God gave me this thing, did this thing, but it was in vain because I did not work it. I looked for it to do something for me instead of me going after it. And 
when I was thinking about what I would do tonight, and I, you know, it's one thing to think about it. It's a whole nother thing to do it. And I was, uh, and so I, I barely, I barely think about what I'm going to do anymore. Um, and so I had one thought. I thought, I want everyone to know tonight that they have an individual way of communicating the voice of the Lord that we need to move into that. And I think I was hearing one of the words that was spoken maybe by Sharice and, um, and was seeing that the importance of, you know, taking a step back and, uh, getting before the Lord because there is his greatness that's that he wants to place on us. And I thought that greatness looks like us knowing and being confident in who we are, what is already in our hand and using that to further the light that is within us. I don't, we all have the same light, but we all may have a different methods of of the distribution of the light that we are bearing. For me, and I, and it's funny we were talking about music because for me, I was going to, I, I had just a quick thought like, I'm gonna get on there and I'm gonna just play my guitar. I'm gonna just play my guitar and allow Holy Spirit to speak through me and I'll just play and sing to everyone, whatever I'm hearing over them. Well, and then I was, then I was going to take a step back off of that and say, that's how God uses me. That's how I distribute my light. Right. And if you decide, well, let me go take guitar lessons and learn to distribute my light that way. That's only good if that's what God is saying for you to do to release the light that is within you. There is a way to release light. You know that because he says it can be hidden. So if it can be hidden, it can be released. And we know it can be hidden when he says that you shouldn't put it under a bushel. So we know it can be hidden. That means that you can purposefully hide it. You can purposefully release the light that is within you. And he is the light and he is the source of the light that is within us because he, he's God. But how do I appropriate, if we want to call it that, or I like to just say, how do I release that light? I do it with a guitar in my hand or a keyboard or a song. And it's just out there on the water. For you, it could be something else. I, I, I hope that we take this summer and look for what it is that's for us so that we become relevant. You don't have to be whoever it is that you admire. You do not have to prophesy the same way. You don't have to be them, her, him. You don't have to look like them in order to be accepted. And acceptance is saying, I'm looking for people's approval so that they will hear what I have to say. You, that's not the goal. That is existing when you want to be relevant to the kingdom first and not attractive to the people first. And so in this time that we have off, let's get rid of the idea of being attractive to people and releasing light that is attractive and holding back and not, and you know, we don't know, should, you know, should I do it like they do it? Or should I say it like they say it? Did I do it right? Did I say it right? Did I look right? Did I, all of the things that we sometimes focus on, um, was it anointed? Was it not anointed? All of the things that we question, I think that um, we're, we're at a place and uh, and need to move quickly towards this, that we find out who he is based on who we are, right? 
God doesn't it just exist, but he wants to have a relevant place in our life. A, a relevant place in our life, a relevant relationship with us. It doesn't have to look like anybody else's that we've heard preached on any platform. He doesn't have to speak to us like he's. we've heard him speak to anyone else. We don't have to respond to him or to others like we've heard and seen anyone else. You are he is. You are the individual that he created, not so that you can uh, be molded according to what you've seen and heard already. But really, relevancy comes when you're an original and you're okay with being based on his mold. His mode for you, where I'm not looking to sound like such and such a singer. I'm not looking to play like such and such a musician. I am just going to be me, little old me, the way that me is. And this is the mode that he gave me. And I'm not going to try to, you know, mold myself into something that I have seen or something that I have heard in my existence. Relevancy and the people that we are attracted to are people that have said, I'm just going to do what God has told me to do. And they, they always, the ones we're always attracted to are the ones that have do, that are doing it differently. And we, and if you're privileged enough to see them at the very beginning of them making a difference, you also know that after them comes a hundred other duplicators. But they were the original, the mold, and then you get a other you get you get a hundred other churches that want to look like that church. You get a hundred other prophets that want to prophesy like that prophet. You get a hundred other singers that want to sing. Like like them, I tell you, give you one example. Uh, um, when the when house fires came out, uh, and they sing house fires sing. Um, when what's the one lady from uh, from the one church? Everybody likes her, and she does really well. I forget her name right now. Anyway, she comes out and she captures on the recording, she captures a moment with the people and with her Holy Spirit. And they capture it, they record it, and they release it. And everyone that heard that decided, okay, let me duplicate that moment. And then they all began to talk and try to have an encounter in that same moment and, and try to do the same thing, make a moment and mold and mold who they are to that is what I'm talking about. Instead of appreciating the moment that was delivered and recorded and just being able to say, you know what, God will give me my moment. He'll give me my own thing. I don't have to look for it to look and sound like uh, what she did because God's not into that. God's not into that. He's not into duplicating house fires. He's not in, into duplicating the one group that went out with Kirk Franklin recently, you know, and toured all over the place. He's, he's not into duplicating all that. As soon as you see somebody recording in their house, then everybody wants to record in their house. They ain't even a house church. They just recording in their house, you know. We used to say in Chicago, they false flagging when you act like you a gang member, but you ain't a gang member. You, you just trying to act like one, throwing up signs. You don't even know what you're doing. They, everybody recording in a house because that looks like the thing to do. You know, that's molding yourself and becoming irrelevant because you're molding yourself to look like others instead of being important to the kingdom. I'm not saying 
that these people aren't important to the kingdom. I am saying, though, that what the Father has for you, what the Father has for me, is based on his mold for you. And that mold will make you relevant and not just okay with being existing. I think that we have become, I think I'm going to act like I'm talking to you by yourself. I think you have become tired of being just existing and you're trying to figure out how your voice can move even beyond the prophetic community and touch others and bless others and would be what we're saying tonight relevant in other people's lives does that mean you have to have a thousand ten thousand people that you're relevant to no it, it means that you want to just be relevant and you're looking for to apprehend what you were apprehended for you're looking and you're saying to yourself i have received something i have something i've been trained and I don't want this to be in vain, Lord. I know you want to do more with what you have given me. Here I am. How do you want to do this? And he's saying, I'm, I've already created a mold just for you that will cause you to be relevant in the place that I am going to set you in. You're not for everybody. You're for somebody. And if you're trying to speak to everybody, let's say even on Facebook, that's ridiculous, you know, not, it's just not, you know, Facebook isn't a ministry. You can minister on it, but it isn't your ministry. And so, uh, that's not it. Yeah. It's, there's a mold and there is a place for you. You want, you can say the same thing in two different places and in one place, just is illuminated and takes off and it's just crazy crazy good in another place it's completely dead that just means lead me in the path you want me to be led to so that I speak to whom I need to be speaking to That I am in relationship, pivoting my life in relationship with the people that I need to be in relationship with. Instead of just dropping seed everywhere. And it's just existing. It's not relevant at all. So the scripture says uh, that, you know, one sows one plants another one waters and so that he can give the increase paraphrase the the point is is that we're talking he's talking about position and place just as much as he's talking about increase and watering there is the first thing that one has to be in the right place so this thing can have the potential to take off it there if <laughs> there is no there is no potential if you're in the wrong pot if you're if a plant is placed in the wrong pot the potential for it to die can be based on the size of the pot that it's planted in and so it's just knowledge for people that do plants i don't do plants so this is the only knowledge i have that when a root start to grow you need to move it to a bigger pot. So, or else what had the potential to grow, if it's stuck in one place, it will die. When your roots start growing and your roots are growing, it's time for you to get into a larger pot so that you're not the biggest thing in the pot like you were previously, so that you can grow the way God wants you to grow. I'm not talking about whether you leave prophetic community or whether you enter the prophetic community. I'm not talking about that. This is not that. I'm talking about what God has called you to do. And he's saying, I need you to apprehend something. And you need to be saying like Paul said, 
you know what? I am what I am by the grace of God. And your grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, Father, I'm going to work harder than anybody else to apprehend what you have apprehended me for. Paul could have been challenged. I'm supposed to be done. Paul could have been challenged by the fact that the other apostles were already 12 in number. When they went to replace the last one, Judas, they replaced him. They were already full, you know, and yet here he is, vision, knocked off a horse, you know, scales on the eyes. He could have he could have denied himself the whole opportunity for the potential that was within him in that situation, but he did not deny him. He just said, you know what? I'm going to work harder than all of them to get what I'm supposed to have. And I'm not going to listen to the enemy who would try to sway me and tell me I'm not good enough. I'm not qualified. I haven't seen him. I haven't walked with him. Any of that. I only saw him in a vision. And who cares that I had a vision except for me? That sounds like all of us. But yet he's calling us to something of relevancy and remove us out of complacency with just being okay with what we have and what we have always had, which is breath in our bodies. There's way more. There's way more. So I want to pray. I want to pray. And we'll just pray and see what Holy Spirit says. Father, we just thank you. Uh, we thank you for your grace that is on us. God, I thank you that your grace is not dependent on us, Father, but your grace is just full and in measure upon us. And we, Father, we forgive ourselves first for not working in the, in the way that we should work to obtain and apprehend that which you have placed in front of us, Father. And we've made excuses and in, in sometimes and made scriptural excuses sometimes and said that we don't work for this. But, Father, uh, we have to at least study to show ourselves approved. So we, we, we ask forgiveness for where we have missed it. And uh, we forgive anyone around us that has caused us to uh, lay in wait, to lie in wait instead of working our faith and moving our hearts towards you and, uh, and allowing our vessels to be filled with light so that we could be poured out and then poured in again. We've sung about it. We've preached about it. We've heard about it, Father. But today, Father, we, we are tired of existing. We want to be relevant in the kingdom and relevant to those who you place in front of us in Jesus' name. And so, Father, tonight we, we remove every boundary that has contained us, every ceiling that has squashed us, every foot that has squashed us, every word that has cursed us, every person that has hindered us, every thought that we have allowed to come in to trip us up. Let those all now die and re be removed in Jesus' name. Like the fig tree, let it dry up now in the name of Jesus. We curse the cursing. And we thank you for life, life everlasting. We thank you for resurrection life right now. And so I speak to everybody, everybody's life. I just speak resurrection life over your gift resurrection life over the grace of god with you in you resurrection life on the things that you thought were dead resurrection life on just sitting and waiting no more we we say resurrection life ascension in jesus name for who shall ascend to the hill of the lord thank you that we will ascend i speak ascension over you in jesus name in this time of summertime as as we take a little break, I speak ascension and relevancy over your life that things will become clearer where things were dim, where things were 
passive. We thank you for the aggressiveness of the spirit to move into that which you're causing us to move into, to leave our personality behind, to leave our character and the things that we have uh, gravitated towards thinking that this is us, Father. We want to be like you. We break the mold of the flesh that people have contained us in, that we've contained ourselves in. And Father, we move towards the spirit. We move towards the spirit. Who you see, who you have formed us to be in Jesus' name. We want to walk as you walk. We want to do what you say to do. We want to say what you say for us to do, Father. And so, we remove ourselves from some of the things that we have built up around ourselves in Jesus name. Anything that the enemy has brought in to your life, we break that now. Any hindrance, any hurdle, any dam just to, to, to uh, uh, keep your water from flowing, any, any shade to cause your light to be dim, let it be now removed. By the power of the name of the Lord, in Jesus' name, let all of that darkness be dismissed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the light of your word that brings increase. Thank you, Father, for the illumination of Holy Spirit that causes us to see beyond what we can, what we can see. We thank you that you cause us to see deeper because you light and enlighten us. And so we honor you, Holy Spirit, and we ask you to show us what we haven't seen that's sitting right in front of us. Show us what's in our hand to use to release the word that's within us. Show us what's in our hand to use to release the light that we possess. So those who come around us, Father, will see the light of Christ in us. They will hear the light of Christ in us. That our words will be relevant and that we will not be uh, careless with our words. Because our words are relevant. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. And we just, we just thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name. Yes, yes, amen and amen again.